Welcome to I Love You and I Like You. With Mark and Kathleen. Welcome back to the podcast. It's been a little while. We had a little hiatus in there for a couple of reasons. Um, We'll talk about one of them in an upcoming episode. The other reason was because we literally filmed two podcast episodes. We tried. A couple of days ago. We did, yep. And the audio didn't work. I plugged in the microphone. And the first rule of using a microphone, an external microphone, always play back a clip to make sure that you're getting audio. This is the second time I've done this on this channel, but I don't normally. Well, you've never had a problem though. Yeah. Every time you've checked the audio, it's always, it's always fine. It's always fine. But you can never assume it's ever. Murphy's Law. Right? Murphy's Law. Imagine if like the Avengers was filmed <laughs> and they did this big budget thing where they had a bunch of A-list actors on there and like one day of shooting cost them $15 million and they forgot to check the audio. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened with this huge budget podcast that we had. We're A-list actors. Right. <laughs> no, we just, we figured maybe it wasn't meant to be. Maybe we said something that uh, would have driven away all of our no, subscribers. Maybe. So, um, okay. Fun one. I heard something in the news. I saw this a few days ago, and then I just heard about it on the radio again this morning. They were talking about it on KSL. Um over the weekend or the end of last week or something, um, ESPN has a traveling college football show. And this is pushing on the limits of my knowledge of the sports world. So (laughs) it it may be apparent as I describe this, but it's called ESPN College Game Day, where they will go, and it's, it's kind of an honor if your college is chosen for this production. So they'll bring in this huge production van, they set up a desk, like all these fans can gather behind That's the cool. desk and they, yeah. they broadcast for like six hours leading up to your school's game that day. But they're like recapping other colleges and stuff while they're doing it. So it's a well-known program and people will make signs for it that are like, you know, go BYU or go, you know, beat Utah or whatever their right. thing is, yeah. right? People will do face paint, they'll wear their favorite jerseys. Yeah. Sometimes the mascots show up and like Get harass the, the hosts. It, you you know? Know? Yeah. yeah, it's like a yeah. mini pep rally right. on national TV, Very which is cool. pretty cool. That is cool. Well, last time that this happened, last week, this guy went on and he was holding a sign that said something like his his you know Anheuser Busch light beer had run out and so it needed replenishment. Or it said like re- needs replenish, right? Yeah and then had his Venmo handle on it. So people, you know, thinking, oh, that's pretty funny, ha ha ha, I'm gonna send him donations. Yeah. I, I think I already told you off the air how yeah. much he made. The guy made like twenty to $30,000. That's crazy, that's 20 to $30,000 initially of people that were like, oh, that's funny, yeah, let's send this college kid some beer, right? <laughs> That's that's like that's amazing. Okay, twenty and, to thirty thousand dollars. In a lot of schools, that would be like a semester of tuition. Well, yeah. But at BYU, for me, that would have been like my whole college undergrad. Right. Thirty grand. That's amazing. Yeah. Here's the kicker, though. He he was kind of stunned that that many people had donated. Right. It. Like he wasn't really intending on that. So you know, and it got out in the news and whatever he's telling people. Um. So he decided, okay, I'm going to donate this to charity. Like this wow. is this is too much. Like it's, it was a joke, you know. I'm going to okay. donate this to cool. ch- charity, and I think it's a children's hospital in the area, okay. if I remember right. So he he goes to donate it to the charity. Well, then Anheuser Busch found out, like the brand that he mentioned okay. in his sign, uh-huh. and they put in like this huge matching corporate donation, and other people what? were coming on board. Wow! Get, guess how much. The total came up to what? It was like one point two or one point three million dollars. Are you kidding? No, no. That's amazing. Okay, so this like this practical joke from That's a dumb crazy. college student, right? Yeah, turned into this huge charitable donation. I think that's well, awesome. and it's good PR for. Well, okay, obviously, <laughs> right? You, no, you I mean can't the buy... cynic in me, which oh, yeah. is why, not, why did yeah. Anheuser Busch step in? Right. Right. It's because they were mentioned in it, and they're like, oh yeah, you know, that's... oh we can we can use this, right? Well, I'm assuming so. Yeah. Maybe they're just really good hearted oh, people. I'm, I'm we just sure. Don't know, but... Yeah, and that's why it was all anonymous, <laughs> like we've talked about in the past. <laughs> And, and no one ever found out that Anheuser-Busch did it. But that's amazing that, I mean, think of how 
many people that could help. Oh yeah. I mean, that's crazy. That's a huge donation. So, so maybe that goes to like pro bono medical um, procedures. Well, because really, there's so many procedures that pays off some bills that whatever could even hardly touch some of the bills. Because when you're speaking of medical bills for children, a children's hospital, a children's hospital, yeah, yeah, the the people need the money. Okay, you ready for a twist out of left field? That like almost ruins the goodwill of the whole story. Now that I've built it up. Okay, an investigative reporter started looking into this kid, like, oh, who's, who is he? Where is he from? You know, what's his background? Whatever. She finds his Twitter account. Okay. And in this era of the danger and the perils of social media, it goes back to tweets from when he was 16 years old. How old is he now? He's in college, so 19, okay. 20, something okay. like that. Goes, goes back to when he was 16 years old and finds racist slash homophobic tweets where he was basically just quoting a comedian anyway. Okay. But that has been enough to like take down powerful A-list celebrities like Kevin Hart, who was going to host the Oscars. And then there were tweets from 2014 that like brought him down. Really? Yeah. So, so now these companies that had like publicly pledged, Hey, we're going to donate all this money. Oh my gosh. They pulled out? They haven't pulled out, but it's a really weird situation because as of the time of this podcast recording, they haven't pulled out. It's a weird situation though, because they want to distance themselves from this kid. But this kid wasn't seeking the attention. He was like, well, I mean, I'm assuming that he wasn't seeking the attention. He's just trying to do something nice. Exactly. And who knows what this kid position is on anything because so much can change in four years right and you go back four years ago five years ago six years what kind of person were you as a 16 year old you were wonderful (laughs) i was perfect no i wasn't perfect we've discussed (laughs) this though you and i wouldn't have liked each other as 16 year olds basically well yeah like you have I mean, not I may have solidified, you, but like, yes. <laughs> personality wise. <laughs> well, you have not solidified exactly. your core personality, your exactly. core beliefs. A lot of your core beliefs are in play at 16, mm-hmm. but, but not to the you point make where stupid you're gonna... mistakes exactly. at 16. Yep. I mean, that's. And not just that, but. Okay, so let's say that I don't even I don't know what the what the tweets were. And I don't, I don't know. I haven't gone back and looked but because let's well, say that. that they were awful. They were horrible. I mean, short of being um, illegal, like he robbed something. No, no it's free should speech. that matter if you're no. donating some money that to help out a children's hospital? Why does it matter? Well, because okay. you're not backing, <laughs> but you're not backing the kid. Right. So like, we're as having a company. We're having really like a, a fundamental conversation or issue. Like, can someone fundamentally bad do enough good to erase the bad? But should that even be a factor in this? Why does no. that even? No, play but I'm, into I'm saying this? like, okay, let's say, you know, a, a dictator who kills a bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, you know, Hitler, Pol Pot, choose who you will. Like. Oh, but look at all these hospitals they've built, but and look at all these roads I mean, I don't and even stuff know like that. that. You can really make that kind of well. That's analogy. that's the leap at one extreme. Well, because you've right? gotten into criminal destroying lives versus okay. good. I, I like that. That's comment, fair. But versus your your beliefs that you hold, or whatever fires you up about politics and yeah. your opinions. Okay, so about, then should we? be held to a standard where there is no such thing as free speech, basically. Should he not be allowed to say whatever he wants as long as it's not inciting violence and, like, encouraging some kind of crime to take place? Yeah. Right? Like, you can't yell fire in a theater. No. Right. That's not protected free speech. That's what I'm saying. You're you're taking... Right now, it's about opinions and free speech, but... It's not inciting violence. Right. It's not. So, so he shouldn't. I'm, I'm, really, I'm not taking, we really should get the quote from what they said. Yeah. Well, what he but said but I'm it. not. I'm not defending. You know what he did, and I'm not saying it's bad either. I'm. I'm saying we live did in a society. Did he have the right to say what he said? Yes. Without being torn. One hundred percent. Yeah. Right. At least based on what I've heard and read. Right. So I, I have not gone back and looked at the specific tweets because I don't care. He was 16 and, you know, 
sometimes 16 year olds get tried as an adult for a murder or whatever like but this wasn't a murder i know (laughs) ruling that that kind of craziness out kids say dumb things i say dumb things or even what if he believed these things whatever he i don't know what he's saying it could have been really dumb and insensitive and awful it has been characterized as racist and or homophobic and whatever so he but from what i understand he was quoting a comedian Okay, then so is then there, how come the, comedian the comedian's head should be on the block, too? <laughs> right. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. I like. agree. So fundamentally, this is, this is the fundamental issue with the outrage culture that we have right now. Because as a society, we got to give this kid a pass for something dumb he said as a teenager on Twitter. This happens he in politics probably all the had time, 30 though. followers, you know, and then this investigative reporter digs something up. But he's, he was not, th- this is the difference, okay? Prior to holding up this sign and going on college game day, he was not a public figure. So he should not be held so to the same standard. So he was not standard. influencing other people. Exactly. So, so I'm saying when you are in a position of, of authority of any kind, you know, you are a politician, you are a celebrity, you are whatever. Yeah, there is a higher standard that has to and be met. And see, I would disagree, in the, and I think I'm disagreeing with you, but um, if you're a politician, if you're a figure of authority, mm-hmm. why should you be held to a standard from something that you may have done 10, 20 years ago, and if you've changed your life? Around? Okay, so I agree, and that's, that's one of the things that we talked about in one of the early podcast episodes. Like, changing your mind can be a strength. Right. If, if or you, even what if you've done something or said something that's awful and terrible or reprehensible, yeah, and you've well, moved, you've learned, from, you've that. learned yeah. from that. How? Why is it constantly being dug up? Because it's it's endemic to this entire outrage culture. But essentially, we don't want to see someone else succeed because somehow their success makes us feel belittled. So everyone's looking for and clawing for a way to bring down somebody instead of looking at the good that they've done, looking at the things that they've accomplished and the ways that they've changed and improved over time, right? So, okay, you know, you think about like societal norms that existed Mm -hmm. in the 50s, for example, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm thinking like pre-civil rights movement is is 100% of society firmly in the camp of like, all races are equal, we're all brothers and sisters. No, right? There's still some people out there that are struggling with some kind of deep set prejudices, maybe passed down from earlier well, generations. Well, I think a lot of it is... But as a society as a whole, we've yeah. advanced. So is it fair to be like, well, Kathleen, you're white, so you must be racist because, you know, 100, 250 years ago, like your family line owned slaves. It's like, but fundamentally, like I don't want to get caught up too much in the specifics of what he said or did. Well, it's say. interesting because fundamentally, this happens in politics with yeah. authority figures. Well, and so that's what I'm saying. So if you're running for office mm-hmm. and you're going to represent the people of your constituency, whether that's a, an entire state as a senator or you know a district as a congressman. Right. Or you're going to be the president of the United States and represent everyone Mm -hmm. like we've we've moved away from that idea where in the past you represent all of us. Right. Mm -hmm. You are elected. You are our elected official. Even if we're on different sides of the aisle, you are my representative. So you should listen to me. You have read enough about the founding fathers to know that. And I'm aware. (laughs) (laughs) Look for those reviews on this YouTube channel. Link (laughs) up here in the card. (laughs) Um, But you're right. You're right. So, So I'm talking about ideals versus reality. But we're in a situation now where it's like, no, I was elected by the fringe of my group, and so I only represent them. And I have to stay in line with them rather than come to the middle so that I'm not right. accused of being on the opposite side. So it's this weird, divisive culture, and and it happened on a political level for decades. I'm saying now we're at a level where a kid who's literally not done with his formal education he hasn't he's even really college. started his real life. I, I, I mean, agree, <laughs> right? And we're holding him to the same standard as someone who's running for office. 
It, it, that doesn't Which make sense ridiculous. to me. This is this is outrage culture. It's mob mentality to jump on well, this kid. Well, I don't even think that it should be applicable to people that are running for office to go back 20 years if it's not applicable to their current okay. position. Yes. Or to their current place in their life. Like, yeah. okay, maybe it's because you and I don't have a record. We don't, I mean, maybe it's easy well, for me, you know. This is exactly what I was going to say. I was, I was going to say, you know, this is a, an unconscious bias that we both have. We're white and middle class. You know, we've always kind of lived in areas where we've been the majority or whatever. But if your elected representative is different from you, so yeah. say, say you are you know, a person of color and your elected representative is white yeah. and they said something, sure, it was 20 years ago, about how like, you know, people of color are ruining this country. Yeah. For example, you but, would have an issue with that person representing you. However, that person's brain hadn't even fully developed at the time. Well, yeah. That's what I don't you understand. You mean this, this teenager kid well, or, it, I or mean, college any, student. Even if you take it to a political level, I think it's more indicative to see, is it a pattern? That continued. Yes. And that's that fair. is current. Is, not did it did but, it transpire over the course of years, right. or was it an in, was isolated it an, incident? Was it something that happened? Like, and I'm not talking about okay, rape, that kind of stuff. That's off the table. Th there are I things mean, there that are things are that are un sure. that you can't yeah. right. But as far as freedom of speech, the things you say. I mean, yeah, we've had to tell our kid, and it's a sad world we live in. I. I abide by the the unspoken rule, but I don't agree with punishing somebody for it right. when they something that they've done years ago. Now, if this kid has current tweets or even within like a couple of years ago right. was tweeting the same. If the back whatever, of his poster said then, <laughs> and you can donate to the KKK at this right, line, right? then like, it would be a that's non a problem. right, exactly. Yeah. But like we've had to tell our kids, be careful what you say, you know, little tiny five year olds can't turn what? Pretzels into little guns, right? Well and, <laughs> like, and didn't our to, son tell us or there was some issue with him saying something like he, he wanted to bomb somebody yeah so he, he wanted to bomb learned... nuke canada or something <laughs> like, so they had he's 10 you know they had talked about history and they had talked about um like military and army and yeah. defending and weapons and stuff like that yeah. so they discussed all this stuff so of course he's like yeah awesome defend my country right, right? that's that's where his mindset's Thank coming from kids can't sign up for the armed forces probably, at age 10 because he probably would yeah. <laughs> but um so they're talking about bad guys what do you do with bad guys he's like yeah, That's right. we'll put the bad guys in Canada or something. Which is like the most foreign like, country you can think of. <laughs> it's like, and let's bomb the bad guys. And we're like, Jeff, we know you. Right. And we know where you're coming from. But nobody else does. And you can't say things like that in this right. world. And you can't. I mean, you can't just spout things off without thinking. And it's something that needs to be talked about. Mm hmm but even but even bad guys deserve due process right, right? and so it's we in our constitution. okay so here's the thing we discussed it and we're like hey jeff so what do we do with bad guys like if you're a cop what would you do with a bad guy mm -hmm. you can't shoot him a law enforcement officer a cop is sometimes derogatory is it <laughs> well it's commonly accepted but yes see even me <laughs> on this podcast my goodness the things i say i know <laughs> but um you have to, you know, you put them in jail. You, like, there is a system. Yeah. There is a... They go on trial. They go on trial. They get a chance to say why the thing happened or right. defend themselves. And he knows that. And right. we discuss it. And we... And he's a good kid. Yeah. Well, and and so, it wasn't malicious. Like, he was just like, oh, right. yeah. Blah, blah, blah. It wasn't you know? malicious. Right. And... <laughs> but, but these are the struggles that we have as a parent in this day. You know, because well, we're trying to raise an emotionally intelligent child who, you know, will will have firm principles of his own, hold his own core beliefs, but allow for other people to think differently than he well, does. But what happens you know? when, if he's 15 and someone's like, right. oh yeah, remember that time when Jeff said this? 
Right. Really? Well, and, I mean, and kids are awful, so they'll probably do stuff like that. But what I'm saying well, is, what I'm saying is, how, what if he that tweets something or whatever the future well, version but, of right, social that's, media is? Doesn't that isn't that a similar thing? But now just yeah. take it up a few years. Yeah. Like this kid was 16, and maybe I don't know. Maybe he would retweet it now. You know, we don't know. Right. Maybe he would. Well, and and the but, issue is that the the court of public opinion, which is not a true court, right? This is not due process is so quick to move all the way to judgment that there's no investigation. I think that it happens. all comes down to fear and mistrust. Yeah. Well, because if you're talking about, well, you said if you are, what did you say? Something about the oh, race, the race, the race reason. problem, okay. the race situation. And you have somebody who is, let's say he's a white man who's running for office and mm -hmm. he said something racist years ago. If you have seen a pattern from other people, you're going, it's going to be hard for you to trust people. Right. You're going to be fearful that that person right. still holds these secret agendas or still well, holds that's, these. That's principles. an association bias. So right. you've known other bad actors who haven't changed. Mm -hmm. So you're more inclined to think that that person can't change right. too. And that's a sad thing. So it's really fueled by fear and mistrust yeah. and thing instead of looking at and, and Russian which, hackers who are trying to make us fight over <laughs> stupid stuff like this. That's right? very effective. <laughs> but but yeah, I think Well it's the problem with the nation with the nation at its core. Right. And and that's a it's something that we're struggling with. You know, it doesn't seem to be just isolated to the United States, because I'm seeing things like this from Great Britain, etc. But mm -hmm. it, more and more people become so firmly entrenched in their worldview that they get to a point and, and that's fine. You can, you can be entrenched in your worldview until it extends to the point where you can't allow for the fact that someone else could possibly believe differently than you. Well, or could do something kind or, or and, yeah, like fix where you're right? stopping someone from doing something yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, really, what did this act of charity have anything to do with his racist tweet he made when he Nothing. was 16? Nothing. Okay. I can would, you not? I would argue I mean, that the fact that this kid who had just come into a windfall of money that would excite any college student, especially with crippling college debt or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, he gets 20 to 30 grand and his first thought is, I should donate this to charity, not I'm going to go buy a new car and buy a bunch of beer, right? Which was right. like, so I would argue that at his core, he is a good person. He's a charitable person or has a really good public image manager, right? But, <laughs> but I don't think that's, that's the true. case, right? What's he majoring yeah, in? A, a, Does he have right? politics in his but future? <laughs> a week ago, he was just some kid on a college campus. Right. What I worry about for his future is that something like this will follow him. He applies well, for a job it's... and that, that job goes, hey, aren't you that kid with the racist tweets? Because it's in the limelight. It's and not just something that's like small. that's the problem. Like right. we need to... We need to allow for the fact that people can change, that people are inherently good and may do bad things sometimes. But if they are legitimately trying to be better, trying to improve themselves, we have to let them try to do that. If, right. we, if we step in and say, no, you can't change, then we shouldn't be surprised when they don't. Yeah. And then collectively as a society, we shouldn't be surprised when we don't improve as a society. Well, that's, it kind of reminds me of, you described once the prisons in Sweden, was it? I don't remember. I, I watched a video. It's like on huh. Vox or something. If I can find it, I'll link it in the description below this video. But they, they have like the world's lowest rate of recidivism, which and is one of my favorite words. <laughs> that means prisoners who end up back in prison at some point after they're released. But why is that? It's and because you would of... think like, oh, it's, you know, it's this really harsh environment. And they torture the people and they make it awful. They play baby shark 24 <laughs> seven. Oh, <yeah. laughs> um, but that's not what, that's not what it is. What it really is, is they have like big floor to ceiling windows. They have a fully stocked library. They teach people trades, you know, like, like skills, but like welding and stuff like that. Look at them as a human being yes. who can improve rather yes. than you're here to be punished. See if you can yeah. 
here's what you have to work with. Try to try to make yourself better, but you're a criminal. And, heart, and there's an awesome know? quote um, from like, like again, like the 1940s or 50s or something, um, where there's a prison warden, and some someone says like, well, why are you teaching people these skills? You know, and, and sending them back into the world. Don't you know that leopards can't change their spots? And he says, mm -hmm. I don't work with leopards. I work with men and men change every day. That's an amazing quote. And I think it's me and it's men and women or whatever. Right. But mm -hmm. people can change and we have to let them or we are the problem, not that person. And I, ha I have to say that some I might feel differently if the crime was made against one of my children right. or I mean you're talking about good and bad and crimes and people can change leopards change their spots and one of my favorite books is the hiding place yeah. and she forgives the nazi who and we need to forgive was, even if someone doesn't forgive, change. you know if someone doesn't change i don't know that as a as a human being because the human side of me might have a hard time if somebody murdered someone that i knew right. <laughs> you know i might be like are you kidding me <laughs> lock that person up forever right. you know but when it comes to stuff that's more like, like a, theft yeah. or car accident, vandalism or vandalism. car accident or, you know, manslaughter, like that kind of thing where it was mm -hmm. an accident or I, I would definitely be more really. Well, it, it depends know. on their intent and where their heart is now, to your right. point. If, you know, if he hasn't done anything reprehensible since age 16, mm -hmm. And you know, five years have gone by. Let's assume the best in other people, right? And learn how to well, like I each other and love each other more. I just don't know why people were digging in the first place. Exactly. Why? What's the point? Someone does something they, good. They got a scoop, yeah. and now it's a national story, and they get credit, right? They're looking out for Maybe themselves. Maybe you were in the reporting world. You probably have a better idea of why someone it's, would. It's a new angle, right? If everyone else has covered this story already, what else can we find out about this kid? And I don't even know that they were intentionally looking for something bad. They were probably just reading through all his old tweets. But what's the point of to find out up more the past who he is? For like you said, you he's not a politician, and I mean, I think we feel differently about I, politicians. So I, I took in that, I but. took journalism ethics classes, mm -hmm. and I don't feel that what this journalist did was ethical. Now, I mm -hmm. think someone would have found it eventually on Reddit or something, and but then maybe it would have filtered through out. The mud? Yeah, they they didn't need to. Right. They were trying to advance their own career, and when you think about yourself instead of thinking about others, this is what happens. You know. So I'm, I'm confident that the charitable donations will still stick. But as far as like the CEO of Anheuser-Busch standing on stage with this kid and like public, that's not well, going to happen. The other thing that's is, does that need to happen too, though? No. I mean. Well, he's not seeking it, right? Right. Like he made his own but... choice or decision to do this. And then the company stepped in. It's all a PR spectacle. Everyone looking out for themselves. And Which is yeah. It, it, they they took something good and pure and noble, and twisted it, and they ruined some, a good thing. Welcome to the news today. I know, <laughs> you know, it's and it's frustrating. But it is. this is why the central message of this podcast in the last couple seconds here <laughs> is to assume the best in people until they give you a good reason to prove them otherwise, or, and you know believe that people can change, give them the space and the latitude to change if they're trying to, let people do good things. If they have good intentions, that is what will make us better as a whole, right? A rising tide lifts right. all ships. And if we want more positivity and more good things in this world, we need to yeah. allow for that because the next person mm -hmm. who writes a big check to a children's hospital well, they're is, going to think twice. They're going before. to think twice before yeah. they do it. And that's unfortunate. So whew, that was a good topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now's your turn. Mm -hmm. Leave your comments below this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, leave us a voicemail on the anchor app or on the anchor website and let us know what you think. What would you have done in this situation? If you were that kid, if you were the reporter, if you're the companies that are making these donations, you know, where did we go wrong and what could be done to improve kind of the societal outrage that we're collectively having to deal with? And, you know, 
if you're going to write a big check and be charitable, um, you can find my Venmo. I'm not going to That's use it true. on beer. One of the ways you can support us is by subscribing, liking, following, sharing this uh, wherever you're listening to it or watching it. Thank you for your support. We love you and we like you. And we know that even if you're struggling with something, if you're trying to change, we should let you, we should support you in that. So thank you for your efforts to be a good person. I mean, we're trying to place. change every day, right? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Like so. we messed up recording these podcasts a couple days ago and this one worked. <laughs> so that was an improvement. There we go. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> sticking around and helping me with this. I love you. It's fun, I love you too. And I like you. And I like you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, we'll see you next time. Yeah.